So I think we should get started. Um, welcome uh, to this webinar on careers in sales. Uh, my name is Mark Gantley. I'm chair of the Western Regional Skills Forum, and I'll be steering you through this event today. Uh, before we start, uh, I want to thank all those uh, who helped make, make this event happen. Many of them will be participating through the panel sessions, but two people who won't because they're backstage uh, running the show uh, are Denise Rocks from the Regional Skills Forum, who's project managed this entire event, and Anthony Shocknessy uh, from the Portershed, uh, whose webinar infrastructure we're delighted to use. So thank you to both Denise and Anthony and to all those who helped make this happen. Um, our intent today is to shine a light on sales and particularly inside sales. And if you don't know what inside sales is, don't worry, because we'll cover that. Uh, this is a growing sector in the West with many companies choosing to locate sales functions here over the last 10 years. And even during the pandemic, we've got new companies arriving. And we'll be hearing from one of those uh, globalization partners in this event. Uh, the webinar will take the form of two uh, panel discussions, each lasting about 20 minutes. Uh, the first will include recruiters and employers who will talk about career opportunities that exist, uh, what the roles actually involve, uh, what skills and experience they look for in hiring, and most importantly, what specific opportunities they have at the present or in the very near future. And the second panel uh, comprises people actually working in sales. Uh, we learn a little about the backgrounds that they come from, why they chose sales as a career, and what the role actually involves day to day. Uh, we have a great attendance here today. We want to hear from you. Um, if you have a question, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Um, at the end of the panel sessions, I'll do my best to collate those questions and in particular to ask those uh, that are most popular, pass them across to the panel. Um, officially, the event will close at 1.30, but we'll hang around for a while longer if necessary in order to answer all your questions. Uh, you'll notice we're recording the event. For those who couldn't make it, we'll send out a link afterwards uh, to all the participants. Um, so let's kick things off uh, with the first panel, uh, which is chaired by John McArdle of Channel Mechanics here in Galway. John is also chair of our Sales Professional Network, which has built a community of salespeople in the West. An event like today's are actually typical uh, of the work that they do. So John, over to you. Thanks, Mark, for that introduction and thanks everybody for joining in. Uh, just to kick off a little bit um, with a view generally of sales and as Mark said, there's an incredible number of companies, both multinational and indigenous that are well established in the Western region. Uh, I'm one of those people that made the transition. So I qualified as an electrical and electronics engineer many years ago and reluctantly thought that I was making the transition into a full-time sales career uh, seven years ago, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it. So, you know, again, part of today is exploring your background, thinking about what you might like to do and is sales something that will be of interest to you. And for those of us that have made the transition, you will definitely hear our stories and we'll talk about war stories if you want as well, but de definitely will endorse it. Uh, to give some context, uh, you know, we are in a pandemic situation, as Mark said, the number two in demand role worldwide on LinkedIn in terms of job applications is sales. There are 17 million open sales roles globally currently. And if you think if we could even take a tiny percentage of those into the West of Ireland, we could build a really thriving hub. And remember the DNA of the nation that we, that we are. We are a nation of storytellers. The fundamental basis of any top class sales professional is the ability to tell a story. So the key trick is to make sure that your story though is truth well told, right? We want to stay truthful to the story as well. So in terms of what you're going to see here, not only do we have companies that are hiring, but we're, back, we're backed up by a tremendous ecosystem of uh, colleges between NUI Galway, uh, GMIT, their business schools, the ETBs, the Sales Professional Network, which is run by volunteers. And more recently as well, we've got this wonderful structure around building the sales apprenticeships, and you're going to hear from some of those today. So we are the only region in Ireland with that ecosystem of supports and this type of network, but we want to bring this learning nationally as well. Uh, 
for me, given the pandemic year and just some background to why we created this event, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, two people that made the transition from roles in hospitality to sales. One is a, a good colleague of mine, Trevor Moya from Smart Bear, and we're going to hear from other people in Smart Bear today. And another colleague, Adam Jarrell, who is living in Boston and was the inspiration for me for this event when he said, we need to give people hope. We need to promote sales as a profession and help people that are maybe looking for a career change or work. So I'm delighted then to host a panel that comprises uh, Margaret Cox, who's the director of Ice Group, a well-established um, heritage company here in Galway in the technology and indeed recruitment sector. Welcome, Margaret. Uh, to Daryl uh, Bogle, who's from CPL, again, a fantastic national, now international founded recruitment company that specializes also in sales recruitment and Daryl's based here as the director for the West. Uh, we've got two people from industry. Uh, a warm welcome to Catherine Koderitz, who is our newest company to establish in Galway Globalization Partners with a sales function. And we welcome Catherine from Germany via Boston to Galway. And of course, last but not least, Chris Murphy from Smart Bear, where I wore the official badge of sales uh, with pride. So welcome. Um, let me start first with the uh, recruiter side. So Margaret, if I can start um, with you, please. In terms of the roles that you're seeing, Margaret, and the sort of inside sales and traditional sales, what are you hearing, Margaret, in terms of like what is inside sales? Are people confused by it? Uh, how do you describe it to people that come asking you about what those roles are? Um, John, interesting question, actually. And I think that for, um, the term inside sales to me sort of has come to us uh, via the United States. Um, in the olden days, before we, we started to create that whole structure of professionalisms, sales was just sales. And at the end of the day, I think sales is just sales. If you're in sales, whether you're working the phones and you're making outbound contacts, which means you're ringing people outside and you're trying to bring the leads in, or the leads have come into you and you're working in um, an environment where you're answering the customer's queries, you're providing the solutions and so on like that. Um, what we're hearing is very much what you painted there and um, the, the profession to be in on a global basis if you want to be successful is sales if you think about sales as the lifeblood of any organization and um, if you want to be successful in an organization that's the place to go uh, one of the things that's important i think if you're looking at sales is you need to decide for yourself Will you have the resilience, the persistence and the attitude that you need for sales? Because it's a hard job, but it's incredibly rewarding. It can be rewarding uh, from a financial point of view, depending on the structure that might be in place in terms of um, compensation and, and remuneration. Or indeed, it can be just um, in different organizations. It's about just getting that sale over the line because it's very, very in your face in terms of actual achievement and success. So. I would say to people inside or outside sales, um, very little difference, I would think, at the end of the day, if you've got the skills that you need, which are good communications, that uh, personal resili resilience, you need to be good with technology so that you can use technology to make yourself uh, more successful and more effective. Um, and you have to have that can-do attitude. I think it's all about attitude in terms of sales. I love sales. Sales, I have lived since I started work the very first day that I got a part-time job in my local shop when I was doing my intersearch, maybe about 10 years ago, I wish. Um, but sales is about communication with the customer and that sense of achievement. And that probably doesn't answer your question, but it's, it's a sense for what I have around sales. I'm not sure. And certainly if you have more specifics, um, <coughs> No, that's great, Margaret. And Daryl, if I can ask the same question to you, because you're dealing with um, these asks right now, particularly for the technology sector, was there anything you would add to what Margaret described there? Um, no, I think Margaret hit the nail on the head. It, it, it's attitude is a big part to it. I suppose maybe there is a sense of a fear of sales. I think some people, when you, you say, oh, I want you to sell a product or I want you to create a sale, there's a fear factor there. I, I can't do it or I'm, I'm not comfortable 
capable of doing it. I think you have to demystify it to a certain extent. What what is a sale for me? A sale is to your point a little bit earlier on, John. It's storytelling, but it's relationship building, and I suppose. Um, if we think about where we are from an economic perspective at the minute, what I see is two economies at play. Uh, we've got our, our our colleagues in the retail and hospitality sectors at the moment who are probably on pandemic unemployment payments and are probably looking at a, a you know a, a bleak employment market to a certain extent. And then we've got companies uh, represented here today uh, who are saying actually we have employment opportunities. And when you narrow it down, the 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 the, the skill set is quite similar. It's someone who's comfortable communicating. Uh, it's someone who can offer a good customer service experience. And it's someone who can build a relationship. And I think that's applicable to, to, to all of those um, to all of those people out there who've worked in other sectors. So for me, I think it's an opportunity opportunity it's an opportunity where maybe inside sales as a sector is a little bit hidden um it's it's if you went to your local pub and you said what's inside sales i think you know at least 75 percent of the people go having a clue what are you talking about it's it demystified it's it's working in typically in a technology company and it's promoting their products and the exciting opportunity is you can be living in living here in the galway area where we're all from and uh, that speaks for itself in volumes and you can be working for global companies informing customers about products that are out there and probably the other thing for me is there's a, a defined career path here so your entry level type of role for those who's applicable to is a, a business development or a sales representative where you learn your skills and um, but then you've got the, the the senior sales representative, then you've got the team lead role, then you've got the manager role, then you've got the sales director role, then you've got the vice president role. There's a journey here that you can take. And I suppose the really interesting thing for me about sales is if you can prove yourself willing and able, that promotion path uh, is quite quick. It's quite rapid. Um, and I suppose, again, if you're in a different sector today and you have those skills and you're willing to invest a little bit from an educational perspective, and if the company is willing to invest in you, it's a very exciting opportunity here in our doorstep that most people maybe don't realize is there. Good. And we definitely are going to get some great insights from the industry um, people in a second. But I'd like to close with just a question each for you, Daryl and Mark. I'll start with you, Daryl, and then we'll uh, get Margaret's insight. What sort of roles are you seeing in the region? Like, is there is there a demand and a sustainable demand for this? You know, for people that maybe are concerned about making that transition, is sales, you know, a valuable, sustainable career? And is there a breadth of opportunities in the region right now? Uh, from my point of view, definitely. I think the the number of companies who are seeking sales talent to join their companies is 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 very high, and I think that demand will grow. We look at Catherine's uh, announcement earlier on this week with the number of jobs that they've announced for Galway through Globalization Partners is very exciting. Uh, we look at something like Diligent. We look at Smart Bear. There's a consistent demand, which which really tells you that there is a need there. Um, and again, from a company perspective, if there's a fear factor there, sales is the lifeblood of a company. If sales aren't happening or sales are are, are non-existent, the companies can't thrive. So for, for the West of Ireland to be seen as a destination of sales professionals, um, I think that in itself will lead to even more opportunities coming coming downstream from different companies and continue our our position as a very attractive employer base so yeah i think it's uh, i think this could be massive really and looking at it in the next three to five years with with uh, this type of a process and this type of type of infrastructure in place we should be very well positioned to fight globally for those type of opportunities to continue to come to galway in the west of ireland Margaret, I'll ask for your insight just before I switch to the industry. Have you anything to add? Um, just to say that uh, what we're seeing is certainly, yes, there is a market for people who want to move into sales. Yes, it's an area that people will take a chance on somebody who may not have specific experience in that area, but has an understanding about the industry or the sector. Um, I think what's key for people if they're making moves, they really need to understand, um, have really good digital 
skills in terms of the technology. They really need to understand the social media platforms. They really need to understand the concept of digital marketing um, and then interacting with people on a digital platform. And they need to not be afraid, afraid of that. And I know you're probably going to talk about it later and, and Mark mentioned it. Um, but the sales apprenticeship and then bringing up professionalism into that by recognizing it in terms of giving it a professional qualification yeah. is absolutely um, a real step forward. And for probably only one or two of us on this panel who may, might be myself, yourself, John and, and Mark, I mean, we remember back to the good old days when um, it was uh, even before FOSS, when it was ANCO. And ANCO had a really, really good program for marketing and sales people at the time and that has now morphed into the sales apprenticeship so certainly for people who are out there looking to make a move and wanting to take a chance and um, they should certainly be taking a look at that area in terms of training and development um, but I'm, I'm with Daryl on this there is a huge opportunity for us in the west of Ireland um, to create an economy that can service the entire world and again thanks Daryl and um Mark as well. Again, for anybody that is interested, you know, do explore the, the conversation with professionals practicing, but do talk to people like Daryl, Margaret and their team because they see that breadth. I'm going to switch to the industry panel um, <clears throat> and this will be a test to see how good they are at selling their own companies. So Catherine, if I can start with you, um, can you tell us a little bit, Catherine, about uh, the structure that globalization partners now have established in Galway for your sales, what type of roles, what type of structure, and maybe a little why, why did you choose Galway based on your, your decision to, to set up here? Great. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here and thanks a lot for this great question, John. Um, yes, yeah, so globalization partners is a US based uh, company and um, we choose Galway because I think um, the city is really dear and near to our hearts um, actually some of our um, leadership team have already helped other companies move into the region and they have been really impressed by um, the talent that is here and just the whole infrastructure so it was an easy choice now with globalization partners when we were looking for our um, EMEA headquarter uh, to choose Galway once again and um, so we actually um, set up shop here last year in June um, a little bit of a delay, obviously, with the pandemic, um, but we are now about 40 people across different departments. Um, so across legal, finance, marketing, operations, and then, of course, sales. And um, I'm here, the sales director, so my job is really to build up the sales function in Europe for the company. And um, we currently do have three business development reps and another three actually joining in the next two weeks, uh, which will get us to six BDRs. Um, and my sales team, uh, we currently have four sales executives um, and I'm actually looking for another three in the next uh, coming months, right? And then it's really me as a sales director. But um, the industry that we're working in um, has really seen a huge growth uh, due to the pandemic because we're actually supporting remote work. Uh, yeah, the possibility for companies to set up um, teams around the globe um, uh, as remote work. And um, so we're definitely seeing a huge, a huge growth trajectory over the next coming years. Super. And for your hiring, so you've mentioned some great story there around hiring three BDRs, three more coming, looking for additional growth in the team. Mm -hmm. What sort of um, backgrounds do you hire from, Catherine? You know, are you looking for particular skills for that first team or have you taken a chance on some people, to use Margaret's words? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, great. And I was really listening um, very closely, obviously, what, what Daryl and Margaret have, have shared about kind of the typical backgrounds of salespeople. And um, I mean, if you would have asked me when I was like five, what I wanted to do being a sales director was probably not on the top of my list. <laughs> um, but now I can really not think of anything better to do if you're working for the right company. So I think it's a little bit difficult, right? So um, for me, the setting up a sales team here, the initial hires are definitely, I'm looking for quite some um, experience, right? And that they're really the backbones of, um, of the team. Um, but I think generally what is most important um, for both the business development reps as well as sales executives, it's like, it honestly doesn't matter what your background is. <laughs> as long as you really have the right attitude. And um, I think Margaret, you said resilience, right? 
Um, and for me, the most important thing is in the interview process is can someone listen, right? Because it's not about selling. <laughs> it's actually all about listening, yeah. right? You need to be able to ask questions and actually hear what someone really means and what they really need to then see on whatever, whatever it is you're selling, right? If that actually is the fit and how that can really solve their, solve their challenges. Um, so really, that's what I'm looking for much um, for, for most of the candidates that we're that we're um, that we have in the process. And then, since we are growing so rapidly, um, I really am looking as well if someone would thrive in an environment that is changing uh, constantly, right? Because I think generally um, everyone needs to kind of see what works best for them. Is it a company that has everything already very structured, and you're becoming a part of a of an existing team where everything is pretty much already set, or do you rather want to work for a company that is um, that has that is in high growth, uh, where you really want to become part of that and kind of bring in your own ideas? And um, uh, yeah, that's really that's really what what I'm looking for. Good, thanks, Catherine. And Chris, if I can switch to you, please, and tell us a little bit about maybe the sales structure, the scale of it that's been set up by Smartbird in Galway. Yeah, for sure. So, um, firstly, I, I joined Smartbear myself, uh, just coming up on a year ago. So, uh, my first day was the first day of the, the pandemic. So, that was uh, oh uh, a good bit of fun. Um, however, we, we, we were set up, um, I suppose, to, to be able to operate and actually thrive in, in, in this backdrop. So, I feel quite fortunate that I landed in, in Smartbear at a, at a time that's maybe challenging for, for, for others because essentially, we, we operate in the e-commerce and digital transformation space, which you know, pretty much every business has to, has to move towards. Um, in terms of the sales organization, um, although Smartware has been around for a little while in, in, in Galway, we're in, in an investment and a, and a growth cycle. So what does that mean? It means that there are uh, external investors that are investing in products and, and growing the Smartware business, which is exciting for us. It means that we have the, the necessary resources and um, but also in, in EMEA we're looking to, to to grow our business so right now we're hiring nine open roles within our, within our sales organization which is which is pretty um, exciting um, and just to give you a bit of a flavor of, of the sales organization and the type of roles that we recruit um, you can firstly we have over 100 people in in, in Galway of which about 50 to 60 percent are sales I would categorize them into two camps. We have uh, what I would call our direct sales organization. So those are the people that are responsible for, uh, I suppose, working with customers and closing business. And then you have our, um, I suppose, indirect uh, side of the sales organization, which is a mixture of channel, and um, so working with our, our channel and partner ecosystem, as well as our um, SDR program. So that's our sales development program. I think that's really relevant to today's discussion because essentially that's the entry point. Um, so if there are, and we've got lots of examples in, in Smartware, I'm sure there's others um, amongst the panel here, but it's a really good opportunity for people to come from whatever background where they have the soft skills, the attitude, the resilience, and we put them into a program that actually focuses on setting them up for success. Um, so that's the environment that's not carrying a quota in day one and actually focus yes. on learning and setting them up for success. So my, my biggest piece of advice to someone is if they if it's of interest and they feel they have some of the soft skills, is that's a really good way to get into an organization and make sure that you focus on the learning in the first six or so months. Because uh, you know I'm in my 14th year of, of sales and once you take a quota you have it for life. So enjoy the time without a quota and focus on your learning with the uh, piece of advice. Thanks for that, Chris. Well, I'm going to give an opportunity to switch shortly now to the second panel, but just to leave with two closing thoughts, which should give hope and encouragement to anybody interested in the career from all the panelists. And again, thank you for these insights. The common theme to be successful and to be interested in a career in sales is soft skills. So it's around communication, resilience, you know, that whole softer side and, you know, cut out for it. So it's not about technical things, process, because all those things can be taught and the product that you're selling can be taught as well. So 
if you've got that type of um, personality traits and the, and the panelists will be happy to share what they look for, that is a brilliant starting point for being in sales. Uh, the final thing that I'll leave with is that we are in a pandemic and you cannot cut your way to growth, okay? The only way that you can grow your company is to sell more. And that's what you're hearing from the companies that are speaking today. So really, this is the exciting part about sales is that you can make a difference. You can not only make a difference to your company, but you can create revenue that keeps your colleagues in jobs or even create opportunities to hire more. So it's a very rewarding career. So I wanna thank uh, Margaret, Catherine, Daryl and Chris, uh, we leave time for questions at the very end. So people will be more interested in maybe asking questions direct. Uh, Mark, I'll hand it back to you, please, for the next panel. Uh, th thank you, John. And, and thank you to the panelists as well for a great discussion.